Hello fellow filmmakers, this is Nikki with a short update from the media division, talking about the Panasonic AU EVA1, or oh, what the hell, it's the EVA1. That rolls much better of the tongue, doesn't it? The global information embargo has been lifted today, August 3rd at 1600 CET, and the full specs are released to the community. I'll put a link to the press release and the brochure in the description. We all have been waiting for this quite a while. I even made a little funny film about the waiting time. You know, the one where I talk like an old dude, like... You can see it right here. It's fun, I promise. Let's, recap let's recapitulate... Let's look at what we have been known already. We are talking about the little sister of the Panasonic's Varicam. A very capable Cinecam that is used on many Netflix production and in my opinion is image-wise the next best thing to the Alexa with beautiful colors, high sensitivity and a very high dynamic range at a much lower price. A Super 35 size sensor with 5.7K resolution that is oversampled internally for color accuracy, 4K UHD that is then saved on cost-efficient SD media. Panasonic chose to go for EF mount and I support that decision as it gives you a broad spectrum of lenses in almost all classes and opposed to MFT mount it is more or less the standard in sub-cinema cameras. At 1.2 kilos and with a smaller form factor it is almost as handy as a camcorder or DSLR. It has HDMI and SDI out and this support 4K 422 10 bit as well. It can deliver UHD up to 60 frames per second and full HD up to 240 frames per second. It has three internal ND and the slightly gimmick feature to remove the infrared filter through menu input. So what's in the new full specs? It claims a whooping 14 stops of dynamic range. And it claims to have that in the internal compression recording using the full VLOG gamma of the Varicam. As opposed to VLOG L that is used in the GH5 that yields only 12 stops. It has dual ISO meaning that the sensor can be accessed with two different native ISO for clean and low light performance. The Varicam has 805,000, the EVA1 comes in a quite a bit lower with 802,500 native ISOs. Of course, you can always bump the ISO starting from a clean 2500. So, who is this camera for? The EVA1 is a very versatile camera and can be used in almost any kind of production. From wedding and events to docos right up to full scale cinematic productions and aerials. The compact form factor and late weight but high quality internal codecs make it ideal for run and gun and fast turnaround projects. These 10 bit 422 codecs are available in 150 megabits long GOP and in 400 megabits all intra flavor after a later firmware update. Even higher end productions can be done with internal codecs but if your heart or customer lusts for raw then EVA1 can export raw data via SDI to an external recorder like the Atomo Shogun Inferno and the Odysseys. That will come through a firmware update as well. Be aware that the Atomos Ninja Inferno can receive a raw signal as it lacks the SDI input. And no, raw signal cannot be transferred through HDMI. The good. 14 stops is really nice to have. It should give you a lovely roll off in the highlights, it should be more forgiving in situations where it didn't nail exposure and give you a more pleasing result in situations where there's a massive difference in brightness within a shot. If it will generate an image that can compete with a Varicam or even the Aries, only footage can tell that story. And that is not available yet. I love the versatility of the lightweight codex. If you shoot dokus in the wild or high-end weddings or events, news, vlogs, you don't want to cope with RAW. You want something that is easy to deal with in post and it has a small footprint in data but does not compromise in quality. The Canon C200 has a great 1 gigabit per second internal row codec but that bandwidth will eat through your meter in no time. An hour of that will fill about half a terabyte. I can easily shoot 6 hours of footage in a day in some jobs. I leave that math to you. And remember that all that is written on extremely expensive CFAST 2.0 not even talking about archiving your work. So, if you are planning to film your great Himalayan adventure, to shoot fashion shows regularly, the EVA1 will be way more friendly in media and easier on your laptop as well. And if you are going to shoot your occasional narrative and commercial, the raw output gives you quite a bit of options in that field as well. For me, that will make EVA1 one ideal owner-operator cam. The bad. I would love to name the dual ISO feature under the good. Well, 
it was expected that the higher pixel count will somewhat take a toll on light sensitivity. But I have to admit that I'm a little bit underwhelmed with the 2500 ISO after kind of expecting 3600 and hoping for 5000. This will leave the EVO 1 just above the native ISO of the Sony FS7 that comes in at about 2000. 2500 is a good starting point and it's nice, but it doesn't make the EVO 1 a low light hero like the Varicam is. 240 frames per second is very nice, but it's only available with a sensor crop that is not specified at this time. Full sensor high frame rates top out at 120 frames per second. So EVO 1 gets beaten by the GH5. As a GH5 owner, I tell you not to expect a reliable autofocus. The ugly. 6G SDI. While, while it sounds nice, we expected that it will cause some problems getting raw out of the cam to your recorder. And the final specs tell that story. A full sensor readout is only available up to 30 frames per second and a 4K 60 frames per second will therefore be a sensor crop in RAW. Nah. The 4K 60 frames per second will work only over HDMI, so you are stuck with ProRes HQ as a maximum picture quality. Nah. Panasonic. Why or oh why did you not build in a 12G SDI? Very attractive formats are locked into the camera for no good reason. The Shogun Inferno utilizes 12G SDI and it works just fine. The verdict. Looking at the package, the EVO 1 sounds like an ideal tool for my kind of work, ranging from events to high-end commercials. Most features that I complained about are still better than the other cameras in the range. The direct competition like the C200, C300, FS5, FS7, you name them, are lacking one or the other aspects that is important to me. I surely would love the Canon killer feature Dual AF, but I can live without it for now. Tell me your verdict in the comments. So Panasonic, take my money and give me that bloody thing. But first, we are lusting for some footage. Panasonic, bring it on. And that is it for today. Stay tuned via subscribing to my channel or become a member of the Panasonic AU EVO 1 Facebook group. I'll put the link in the description. See you around.